Hi there. In this video, we'll show you how to create an automated self-service app store by integrating the service catalog and ServiceNow with the software deployment capabilities of Microsoft System Center Configuration Manager. A common challenge we face as IT operators is software. How do we provide our users with the applications they need to be effective? Of course, users want to get their new software with as little friction as possible, and they expect a consumer app store experience. At the same time, the business in IT needs to make sure that software is configured consistently, that it's supportable, that license costs are managed, and that security isn't compromised. Those are all important things, of course, but let's highlight one in particular. What do all of these brands have in common? They're all successful, they're all large, they're all well-known, but they also have the unfortunate distinction of being among the many victims of recent high-profile cyber attacks. They shouldn't be singled out because there are many more on the list, and if you're running an IT infrastructure, you almost certainly have the same security risks as they do. But what can be done about it? Well, the subject of IT security often brings to mind expensive and complex technologies like firewalls for intrusion detection, encryption, malware protection, and so on. One might imagine that achieving a secure infrastructure means something like building the vault from Ocean's Eleven. But there's a single configuration that can arguably improve security more fundamentally than any of these solutions, which can be performed in a single click at no cost, and that is removing local administrator rights for end users. This relates to the subject of software installation because the most common way IT organizations improve software delivery time and reduce support overhead is to allow users to do it themselves by way of granting local administrator rights to their devices. Now, this definitely improves the user experience, but the security implications of this simple act are staggering because operating as a standard non-admin user is arguably the single most valuable strategy for reducing attack surface and keeping users safe. For example, one analysis of a year's worth of Microsoft vulnerabilities found that almost all exploits would fail against standard users, including all Internet Explorer-based attacks, all of them. So the simple act of removing admin rights can shrink the attack surface of an organization dramatically more so than any other single strategy. So to the extent that software installation motivates insecure practices like this, giving users an enterprise app store option is as much about better security as it is about efficiency and good governance. That's where this integration comes in. By dropping our direct integration with Configuration Manager into your ServiceNow instance, you can quickly provide a seamless, automated, and self-service option for users to get the applications they need without IT support and without requiring elevated privileges. Directly from ServiceNow, their one-click software request is fulfilled automatically and on the device within minutes. Let's take a quick look now at how the integration works before jumping into a demo. On the left is our fancy green laptop, which represents the users who use ServiceNow to request and approve software. All the records, approvals, the notifications, the workflows happen in ServiceNow using the native capabilities there. The Configuration Manager software deployment integration facilitates translating those requests into an installed application on the user's device by way of the secure connection to Configuration Manager which happens through the ServiceNow mid-server on-premises. So all of the application deployment is handled natively by Configuration Manager, orchestrated by ServiceNow through the integration, and from the end user and administrator perspective, just happens automatically. So with that background, let's see what it looks like in action. We're here on the desktop of Jenna Buck, who's an end user in our organization. And she's been told to get an application called Foxit Reader, which is an alternative PDF viewer. Normally, she might go out to the website, Google it, find it directly, and maybe try to install it herself, or maybe she got it from an IT provided share. Either way, she finds that she's not able to install because she is a standard user as opposed to a local admin, which is exactly what we want from a security perspective. 
The question is, how do we get Jenna her software and get it to her quickly? So that's where the integration with ServiceNow comes into play. We already have Configuration Manager and an application catalog. We already have ServiceNow providing a portal. And now we can connect the two together with the software catalog that Jenna finds in her self-service view. She can browse through, find all of the applications that are provided in the application catalog. And she finds that Foxit Reader is one of those options. This view is just a software catalog item that's native to the ServiceNow look and feel. You could update it and modify it as needed. The one additional piece of information that we add is that we say, uh, which computer would you like to install this app on? Now, Jenna probably doesn't know what her computer is, but she can just um, open this up and finds that she actually is assigned PC4, and that is her only machine in the organization. That's configured through the CMDB and ServiceNow. So she just selects that, and she's ready to order. The order process is the same request process as the native ServiceNow provides us, with the addition that now this request is being processed by the integration uh, in order to translate it into a collection change on the configuration manager side. So it takes that device that she selected, it knows about Jen, and it goes and says, please update this device to get this piece of software from configuration manager delivered to Jenna's PC automatically. So we should see that happen within a few minutes. And indeed we do see that software changes are being installed through configuration manager. And if we open up the configuration manager application software center, we should see that the installation is proceeding as we speak. So Jenna didn't even have to do anything. She just saw it pop up within two minutes or so. And she also gets some notifications in her inbox that show her um, the fact that the software is being delivered. And if we open this up and just see what that is, it's just a few pointers that say it should begin automatically within a few minutes, that if she doesn't see it, she has the option to restart the computer to make sure that it does happen, uh, that it's forced to look for new software. And if that doesn't help, she can certainly open a ticket with support. But it also tells her how to check if your app is installed. All you have to do is open up this thing called Software Center. So if she doesn't know what that is, and most users might not, she can just find it and open it. And she can see that Foxit Reader has been installed, just like she requested through the portal. And now she's able to open that up and use it. Let's look at another scenario involving the approval of software requests as well as what happens when one fails. So suppose Jenna wanted another application and she goes back to the catalog. In our organization, we've configured the requests in ServiceNow to have a workflow that says that anytime a request has a price of more than, say, $500, that means that a an approval is required before the actual application would be installed. So if we look at this 7-zip application, in reality this is a free app on the internet, but we've set a price tag of $599 on there, and therefore that approval mechanism is going to be triggered. So if we do the same thing and we say please install 7-zip, we should see a slightly different result, which is that instead of automatically being approved and the application being deployed right away, we now have a kind of obscured message saying, we're waiting for approval by somebody named Eric Schroeder. And so Eric needs to approve this before the rest of this workflow can continue. Switching over to the view of Eric, we can see that maybe he's got a notification in his emails telling him to come on over to his approvals. He goes to his approval section he finds that there is an outstanding requested item for his uh, perusal, and he can see that it looks like it's 599, it's a zip utility, and there's a quantity of one, and so he can go ahead and approve or reject that. Let's say he approves. What that's going to do now is set the rest of the workflow in motion exactly the same as occurred before, meaning that the collection is going to get updated for 7-zip in this case, which is going to trigger that PC to get that application installed on it, and that should proceed just the way it would otherwise. The one difference being that we use the native ServiceNow approval chain, 
or approval mechanism with all of your existing policies and all of your existing notification capabilities. And switching back into Jenna's view, we can see that it looks like the installation unfortunately has failed. So if we open this up, it tells us that uh, we have 7-zip it tried to install, but we see a status of failed and that uh, we get a cryptic message here that says why. So the next thing that's going to happen is that instead of Jenna having to chase this down and open up a ticket with support, that failure is automatically going to get picked up by the integration and it's going to open a ticket on Jenna's behalf saying, hey, she requested a piece of software it failed, and here is all the information that we know about that failure. Checking the inbox again, we see that an incident has been created after some time has gone by to propagate that error back up. And we can see that it says automated software deployment failed, and an incident's been created for her. Back in the system administrator's view, we can see the incident. Opening that up, we can see it's automatically been assigned to a configurable group, the software group in this case. Category is also set, and there are a few references in the work notes that tell us that we had uh, the last log message saying that the reported failed installation had this error code, and that this deployment record, SWD182, is the one we need to look at for any more details that might be available. So with that, I think it's time that we look at what the integration actually has, or how do you manage that? What you'll see is that there's a new application menu item called Software Deployment Config Manager. And within this application, you have an overview dashboard that shows you the status of your connections to your different configuration manager environments through multiple mid servers if you need failover. Uh, it tells you at a glance how many have completed or failed or are pending or are in progress. So we might want to just drill in to the failed ones and see that there's that failed one that we referenced just a minute ago. And if I open that up, I can see this has references back to what was the requested item, who requested it, what device did they want it to go on, what was the deployment and collection used in Config Manager to actually target that, what is the current status, and then we have a history for everything that happened from the moment that this request was created to when it was added to the collection successfully to when we tried to query the status and didn't find any to when finally, a few minutes later, we saw that Config Manager told us positively or affirmatively, yes, I've seen this installation report an error back. It did not succeed. So now we can go investigate further. Also on the left, we can go look through the imported or discovered things that are brought in when you hook up this integration, the first thing that happens is you bring over all your collections that are in Configuration Manager. That's just a one-click recurring task that discovers all of these collections directly out of Config Manager, no additional setup required. Same for the deployments, also known as advertisements in the old days. These come in directly and they get hooked up to the relevant software and the collection. So that's the linkage between software, deployment, to collection. The software catalog also gets imported from Config Manager. So everything you've defined in your application catalog within Configuration Manager gets brought in as software items. So we can go into any one of these and see that the product ID is actually the Config Manager ID for that software. Uh, the application or package, that is. We have a specific workflow that we use for these, and we bring in whatever description happens to be set in the application catalog entries. And then we can add whatever other information we want, images, more um, information, links, and so on, descriptions. We also keep track of who's assigned which device, and that way we can get immediately from when a person opens a request for software, we can say who or what devices do you have and allow you to choose from those. And then we have the ability to also do some reporting on, for example, it's bad if our users don't have an assigned device that's going to block their automatic 
installation so we can see that there are a few users in our organization, 13 of them, who don't have an assigned computer. And some of these are just internal users, but that points out to us really easily who do we need to make sure has a, use, uh, a computer assigned and who already has one. And then we can go back and see the last 30 days um, what software requests have been the most popular, which ones have succeeded and failed, and so on. So we only have a limited amount in here at this time for demo purposes, but over time you generate some really interesting insights for reporting purposes. So that's what it looks like in action. Just to recap the benefits of this type of integration, really our goal is to improve your software delivery times, to get software onto the machines of your users really fast. And also to increase security by reducing the footprint of local administration privileges on your end users' devices. It can also save a lot of time for both users and for the support staff who have to handle hundreds or thousands of these types of requests that now find them to be automated and most of the time happen in the background of the organization's support cycle. And now we can leverage investments in both our ServiceNow platform doing what it does best with all the system of record capabilities, notifications, approvals, workflows, and the, what Config Manager does best, which is delivering software updates and keeping track of your assets. So this is a fully supported integration. If you want to try it out, we have a free trial available, including helping you get this integration installed and set up with your environment. For questions on any of this, on how to get this working in your environment, feel free to get in touch with us. And thanks for watching.